Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the first in a series of short videos. In each episode, we'll be having a look at the Spark Amp here behind me. Utilizing the Spark app, we'll be looking at building a basic guitar tone from scratch. Now these videos are designed to assist those of you out there that are new to guitar and amps, and particularly amp modeling. Hopefully this will give you some basic tips and techniques as to, uh, to give you the confidence to build your own tones and to do your own tweaking. You'll get to see how I use that guitar tone in a practical application. Uh, and you'll also get to see the guitar uh, and its various different pickup configurations in a recording uh, situation with that one tone. So without further ado, uh, let's head over to the app and start building. Okay, so now we're in the app. Uh, and as you can see, everything is disengaged. Uh, so the, the sound of the guitar is completely raw. And this is what it sounds like in the fourth guitar pickup uh, position using the middle and the neck. So it sounds pretty weak, there's not much on it. No preamp, no nothing. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we're going to uh, engage here. Just to clarify, uh, I run my Spark amp with the headphone out into um, two channels of my mixer uh, where I pan the signals left and right, and then I send them out into my um, digital audio workstation. Um, uh, so, uh, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the volume all the way up uh, because I know that uh, the way that I've set my the input gain on my mixer, uh, I need this volume to be set at that uh, so that the signal level is correct. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my gain up to about eight. Uh, the reason I'm not going to stick it all the way up uh, is because I don't want any uh, I don't really introduce any grit or dirt. Uh, or any unwanted artifacts into the sound. I want it to be as clean as possible and I found that putting it all the way up just introduced a little bit of unwanted uh, uh, grit into the tone. Uh, okay, so, uh, so far we should sound like this. And it sounds still pretty, pretty dark because we haven't messed with the EQ. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the bass uh, all the way off for this. Um, uh, the reason why is because on most funky guitar tones, you, you, don't want, you don't want to introduce too much low end into the guitar. Uh, you want it nice and sparkly and snappy um, so that it's you know, really present in your face and it's not competing with any other instruments. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna stick the middle all the way up on this. And the reason why I like the middle on this particular Blackface Duo is it actually has a broad um, EQ range and kind of covers some low uh, low mids as well and kind of gives it a bit of fatness not f not bass but some fatness to the sound as well as boosting some uh, some really nice mids in there as well which we'll need so so far it sounds like this okay so we're already, already sounding a lot better uh, now I'm going to use the the treble uh, and we're going to take it up to about about eight. Uh, we don't want to go all the way up because we don't want to introduce too much uh, too much of a brittle sound into uh, into the signal. And so we've got now. Okay, and that's sounding a lot better to my ears. Uh, now the next important thing to do with regards to clean tones is to introduce a compressor pedal. Uh, the reasons why we do that is un unlike with uh, uh, distortion and overdrive that compresses the signal, which is basically levels everything uh, out. The clean signals, you have a much greater range of uh, transients you will hear. Uh, if, you, if you vary your pick attack and your playing from you know, one spot to another, it'll, it'll be very heavily noticed. And so the reason why you would use a compressor pedal is just to level out that signal uh, so you're not, you know, popping out uh, un un unnecessarily in a mix. Um, and uh, it also achieves, uh, um, you get a bit of a squished sound as well, which is really kind of cool for 
uh, funky guitar parts. Um, and you'll, you'll, we'll demonstrate that in a second. So let's have a look. We want the first thing to do is to set our level up to uh, unity gain. And what that means is uh, the sound of the compressor, the volume is exactly the same with the pedal on or off. Uh, and you'll find with most compressors that 12 o'clock is unity gain. We're going to leave the toggle switch on compress uh, and we're going to go all the way up with our peak reduction um, to give us the most compression uh, which will take off more uh, of the loud parts uh, to even out our signal. And so now we've got a signal that sounds like this. much more even. Okay, and next thing I want to do is I want to introduce the boost pedal. Not because um, I necessarily want more signal going into the, the preamp, but I find that the way that this pedal has been designed, it kind of gives it a, the guitar a little bit more body as well. Um, not bass again, just a bit more body. So what we do is we're going to find unity gain. usually about 12 o'clock, we're just gonna go a little bit past them, maybe go to about six. Okay. Cool. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at our reverb setting. Now, we don't wanna wash out uh, a funky guitar part uh, with too much effects, uh, especially if you're layering multiple uh, guitar parts they'll just get lost. Uh, so don't go too heavy with, with any effects. Um, uh, just use them sparingly or use them to taste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the, the reverb uh, level on around about a quarter of the way up, about 1.5-ish. Uh, I think that's where I had it. Yep, 1.5, uh, I'm gonna actually use the low cut here to attenuate a little bit more low end. Uh, it, it, I just find it a handy tool to have, particularly if you're not using the EQ pedal in the app to attenuate some bass. Uh, I'm not gonna tweak anything else, I'm gonna leave everything else on the lower setting. Now, all of a sudden, we've got this. You can hear a little bit of a tail there, so we've got. Okay. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool to me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce a little bit of delay and I wanna set it to a really fast slap back delay. So we're gonna to go to our uh, digital delay pedal. We're gonna look for about 175. It won't make it too fast or too slow. We're gonna leave our feedback on, the, on zero. We're only gonna get one repeat and we're gonna make our level only less than one. Okay, so all of a sudden we've got this. Okay. Cool. All right, so that forms the basis of our uh, clean, funky guitar tone. Um, I guess the, the only other variants uh, you wanna bear in mind is your pickup configuration. Don't be scared to use different pickups to play different parts. Um, for example, uh, there's one part that I've used um, just my bridge pickup and um, and it sounded like this with my volume and my tone knob all the way up now uh, this is a perfect application where using your volume knob and your tone knob can help get rid of any uh, or smooth out your your volume or your tone a little bit get rid of a bit of top end uh, and so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm lower my volume just a tad, maybe one or two notches, and then maybe two or three notches with my, my tone knob just to smoothen out and darken that sound a little bit and make it a little less snappy. Cool, that's much better. And uh, you can do that for every pickup configuration. You'll find a sweet spot on your volume. You'll find a sweet spot on your tone knob. Don't be afraid to tweak. Uh, and that goes with all your amp settings as well. Um, uh, I'll quickly just demonstrate here the, uh, the, the mod section. Um, I'll engage the chorus pedal. Now, although I haven't used it um, in this demonstration that you'll see, uh, it can give you a useful effect uh, and that could sound something uh, something like this. Let's have a look. So we got uh, 
Uh, let's make the the right around about a quarter. We'll go depth about half. We'll go the tone all the way up. We don't want to attenuate any uh, top end in this application. Uh, and we're going to make the mix not too strong. We don't want to give it too much. And this is what it can sound like with a bit of chorus engaged. Okay, and so again, you just use it as a point of difference to some of the other parts that you're playing. Uh, again, I didn't use it, but um, I'll turn that off. And the only other thing that I did is one of the guitar parts, the, the main lead that comes into the end of the demonstration. I've just wound up the level of the slapback a little bit and also the level of the reverb and it kind of sounded like this. So, so just, yeah, again, I've only used it to uh, create a point of difference between uh, the guitar parts to make one thing stand out a bit more than the others. Okay, and so that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I hope you found some uh, useful information in there, uh, some, uh, some things that you can uh, take away and apply to your own situation. Uh, hopefully the next one we'll do something like uh, a nice ambient clean tone with lots of reverb, delay, maybe even phaser, uh, chorus bit like David Gilmore-ish type tone. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, I hope you join me uh, next time. Uh, until then, ciao for now.